and Sylvia Plath, the bell jar. Esther is a college student who has just won a scholarship to live in a women's hotel in New York for one month while going to conferences and meeting other poets like herself. Esther is successful. She has received many awards in college and is excited to live in a big city and party. At the very beginning of the novel, we see Esther's early stages of depression as she feels isolated from society, as she feels pressured into being a virgin until marriage, and then after marriage, a stay-at-home wife with children. This pressure started with Esther's on and off college boyfriend, Buddy. Buddy Willard is a representation of a perfect husband in the 1950s. He is handsome, is in school to be a doctor, therefore he's well-educated, he is athletic, and attends church, and he also loves his parents. Yet he had an affair while dating Esther, which sparked the feeling of hypocrisy for Esther because Buddy was seen as perfect, but yet he did the exact opposite of what society thinks is right. After the scholarship, Esther planned on taking a college course at home, but when she does not get into that program, she questions herself on how she is able to receive scholarships as well as awards, but not able to get into a program. After Esther's summer plans of going to college were ruined, she plans to stay at home all summer with her mother, who she does not get along with very well. This results in the fast slope for Esther into suicidal depression where she cannot eat, sleep, nor write. As Esther's mother sees her condition, she decides to bring her to Dr. Gordon, who gives her horrible shock treatments which left Esther scared and horrified. This causes Esther to attempt suicide three times, leaving her in a mental health institution paid by for the woman who paid for her scholarship. Esther progressively gets better at this private institution, and upon lessened restrictions, Esther is able to leave the hospital for short periods of time. This is where she loses her virginity in the bathroom to a professor named Erin. Esther then completes one successful shock treatment, which leaves her feeling that the bell jar of madness that she has been stuck in has suspended, and she is able to feel and function again. But different from everyone around her, Esther believes that at any point she will sink down into the same madness she just came from. She knows she is not healed, but she is recovered enough to live a normal life. The Bell Jar is an autobiography. Sylvia Plath wrote this novel based on her life and her experiences of her life in the 1950s. And she expresses how hard it was to be a poet and how she struggled through many obstacles such as losing her father and attempting suicide. Through the novel, Sylvia Plath lies through storytelling and some of Esther's life events. But when it came to the end, Sylvia Plath basically made the novel an autobiography as she foreshadowed the future suicide So no dead men's Esther. cries, flower forget-me-nots, between the stone this paving this grave ground. This represents her own life, because Sylvia Plath, Here's as the honest age of 30, to unpick the elaborate heart, pair bone prior. free of the fictive vein. She uses her own when one stark skeleton bulks real, all saints' the way she tongues fall quiet. Flies watch and made the readers flare, very damned howling in their shrouds across this is the moor, significant because rave on the leash the of the starving life, mind while the which peoples the bare room, and Sylvia, the blank, and this untenanted novel exposes air. some of the unjust standards for women and the negative effects they create. By writing this novel, Sylvia intended on painting a picture of what it was like for women in the 1950s and how the standards for women were suffocating and you could never escape them. This relates directly to our course name, Truth Lies Through Storytelling, as Sylvia wrote a fiction novel, but the only things about the novel that were fiction are the characters' names and the small events that happen. The bell jar speaks to people. Esther's life is carried in people's minds when they are done reading the novel, and the same problems are seen in the world today with inequality of men and women as seen in the Harvey Weinstein case and many, many more similar cases around the world every day. Equality is slowly but surely becoming relevant in some parts of the world today, and we see from the bell jar 
that the women in the workplace and standards have severely improved between these 57 years and are most likely only going to get better from here.